Yo guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Crazy Course, and today I'm going to be showing you the easiest way to use Data Store 2, in my opinion. Um, now, there's multiple ways you can do this. Uh, they haven't showed you the way I'm going to show you today. I feel like my way is a bit easier. It doesn't use as much as their code, but it still saves and loads basically the same way as they would do it. Just in a, a easier way, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I've left a link to this in the description, so if you want to look at it, it's in the description, go check it out. Anyway, so let's get right into the video. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. Right. So first you want to start off by putting a script into server script service. And let's start off the script by typing local data store two equals require. And in this code here, um you'll find that just by clicking download. And it's right here. I'll leave this in a link as well in the description. Uh just copy that ID right there. And then paste it in here. So now um in this script I'm gonna be showing you how to like add multiple values and save multiple values. Um so first you want to start off by doing a data store two dot combine and then add these little I don't even know what they're called. Um type in data here or you can type this whatever. This is just a master key, um so just call it master key if you really want it. And then you gotta do this little colon and then type in the name of whatever key you want it to be, let's say coins. And then say you want to add another one, let's call this uh, gems. I like that. Now that you've done that, that's your references, they're, they're your keys basically. And let's do game.players.player added connect function. Um, I'm just going to put PLR. Uh, you can put player, whatever you like, whatever you prefer. Now that we've done that, I want to reference the, the saves. So you obviously got coins and your gems, those are going to be separate saves. So let's uh, go ahead and reference those now. Local data coins equals data store to coins and then PLR. Now let's reference uh, the gems as well. So local data gems equals data store to gems player PLR. Now you've done that, let's go ahead and make it, let's go ahead and make a folder to save those in. So um, local folder equals instance dot new folder and then put that inside the player and then we'll do folder dot name equals leader stats, no capitals like that. Now let's make the values to put inside the folder. So let's do uh, local coins equals instance dot new int value, and then put that inside the folder. And the same goes for uh, the the gems. So let's do local gems equals instance dot new int value, and put that inside the folder as well. Now you want to name them. So let's do coins dot name equals coins and do gems dot name equals coins. Now the way I'm showing you how to do this is like completely different from whatever anyone else has done. I haven't found any videos of anyone doing it this way. I just feel this one's this way is a lot easier to understand. Um but when it comes to like saving and loading basically. Um I like you can do these folders and stuff whatever way you like. It's just the saving and loading is the main part. So let's go ahead, and now we've done that, we want to make it load. So to make it load, you just need to type in, let's just reference this first, let's do it, loading, or load data. Then you want to type in um, coins.value equals, um, equals data coins get, like that. And then the same goes for gems, so you want to do gems dot value equals data gems get now there might be an issue if this is nil so I'm gonna do an if check here so if coins dot f or no not that if data coins get 
equals equals nil, then or it'd be easier if we do um, doesn't equal nil actually. Yeah, so if it doesn't equal nil, it will set, it will set the value, and if it does, we'll put else coins dot value equals zero or whatever you want to set the default to. And the same goes for gems. You want to do if data gems get doesn't equal nil, then uh, set the value, and if it does equal nil, which is else, then you put the gems dot value to equal zero or whatever you want it to set it to for default. So that will now load whenever the game starts. It will set the player's value straight away um, to what it was saved to. So let's now code the saving part. So save data. Okay, so saving, um, we're going to use a dot change function on um, whenever the coin updates. So from the way they're wanting you to do it, you have to update the data store first before you can actually change the value of the coins that the player can see. So they're wanting you to... They're wanting you to uh, change the coins here, which is then updating the data store, and then the data store is then um, firing to the client and telling them how much coins they've got left. We're not going to be doing it like that. We're going to be changing the value from like a different script, for example. So um, if you want to update the coins, you can do coins dot value equals coins dot value plus ten on a different script, and then whenever you this will just check if that's been changed. So um, for example, let's do coins dot changed connect function like that so now that it's changed we're going to make it update the the data store so instead of the data store being updated and then it changing the value we're going to change the value and then update the data store like you would in previous um, data stores that's why I feel like this is easier because you don't actually need to update the data store in a script it does it whenever the game ends like it saves all the values when the game ends. This will save the values straight away as soon as they're changed, like the way they're wanting you to do it. But instead of doing it through the script, you're doing it as a dot change function. So now that you've got the dot change, you want to add here data coins set uh, coins dot value. So as soon as it changes, it will then update and change. It will save the value to the data store that has been changed to. So um, you can say you change it to ten it will instantly go and save it to the data store as 10. So that's how that works. So let's do the same with um, the diamonds. All right, let's do the same as gems. Let's do gems.changed connect function data gems set gems.value. So now that we're, that's, this is basically the script done, you're finished. You don't need to do any coding like um, the way they're wanting you to do it. You don't need to add coin store uh, increment and then the product price. Um, that's just the way they're wanting you to do it, which is, means you have to add, instead of doing like in a script, coins.value minus 10. Instead of you doing that, they want you to do this for every time. But I feel like I feel like changing the value is much easier, so I'm just going to keep doing it like this. Um, it depends on what way you, you want to do it, really. If you want to change it through the data store first, go for it. This works the exact same way. Um, and I can show you that by placing a part. We'll just, we'll just do like a... Whenever you walk on this... Yeah, we'll just do whenever you touch this part, you'll get like plus 10 money or something. And then I'll make it print. Um, so let's do that. So let's do workspace.part touched connect oh, connect function touch it so um, if let's, let's add a d bounce first actually local d bounce equals false if d bounce equals equals false then d bounce equals true wait one and then make the d bounce equal false again and um, you should know how that works and um, it's pretty simple now I will do if touch it, or let's do if game dot players find first child touch it dot parent dot name. Then uh, we'll change the players coins. So we'll do game dot or yeah. So we'll do local player equals game dot players touch it dot parent dot name player dot leader stats coins 
dot value equals player dot leader stats dot coins dot value plus ten or plus a hundred will do. Now this is basically the normal way you do it. If you haven't, if you don't understand how this works with the increment, it's literally the same thing. But instead of you updating the data store first, you're updating the the value, which is then making the data store update and save. So it's pretty simple. It's basically the same thing, and um, it's just an easier way if you remember the data store one better than you do this. Um, so yeah, that's it done basically. Uh, just need to make it print. So when it updates, we'll just print coins dot value. Actually, no, we'll make it print whenever it loads in. So we'll do uh, here print coins dot value. Yeah, so now that's the script done, so let's go ahead and test it out. Need to publish it, back a second. Okay, so I've now published this the, the game. Let me just it's quite hard to explain how this, this works. Uh, but I hope you understand. So at the minute we've just joined and it should print actually wait. We should make it wait a few seconds before it prints. Um it should have said zero, we stand on this. Actually I just realised we've got coins here anyway. Uh, yeah, so look, the coins is here. Shows 500, 600, 700, 800. Now it says 800, we'll leave and then we'll join back and it should save and show 800 again. As you can see, it's now saved and it still says 800. Um, so we can stand on it again, get to 1000 and then we can do it again. We'll leave and rejoin. And as you'll see here, it will still say 1000. So there you go, guys. Um, that's how you do that. It's pretty simple. It's just the same way. Um, as what they're telling you, I just find this way a bit easier because um, you can now, instead of referencing the data store in every single script you want, you can just, um, or every single script you're using, you can just change the value and it will update on one script um, as soon as that value is changed, obviously. Um, and that's it, it's pretty simple. I hope this did help you guys, and if it did, please leave a, a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.